We are back. Um, copies were made to the members of an email from Mr. Fletcher dated August 3rd at 4.53 p.m. Um, Representative De La Cruz, I believe you had a, you were going over the document or the email and Mr. Fletcher, the question has been posed. Before I get at your question directly, I'd like to frame it if, if, if you allow me, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I've worked for boards and directors and commissions uh, for, for almost 30 years. And there are distinct roles that occur between management and your boards. Boards are the policy makers. As the managers were the implementers. Now, of course, managers always want to influence policy. We always try to steer it. We always try to provide the best data we can for decision making. But when it comes down to the end, it's your board of directors that are the decision makers for major policy decisions. I think we're all familiar with that model. Now, as staff, we have a responsibility that once those policy decisions are made, we're going to implement it. That's our job is to implement it. If we can't get behind that policy decision, we, we disagree so you know, vehemently, then it's not up for the board of directors to change. It's up for the management to change. Uh, so that, that's just the reality of working for boards and commissions uh, over time, and that, and that has been my experience. Now back back to August 2nd when when it, the PPA was getting ready to be finalized. Um, as mentioned in the past, we it, during the month of July 2012, because there's been a lot of dates floating around, and I, and I just want to reiterate, CUC was presented the PPA in late June, early July 2012. So this is a 30-day period. And in that period, we provided consistent statements of analysis. On August 2nd, recommended that there be more analysis and that the agreement is not ready. After that statement was made, the, the former Attorney General stated to the Governor and myself that the agreement had gone as far as it could go in the negotiations. It was ready to move forward. Nobody ever gets everything they want. Something to that effect. It was obvious to me the agreement was moving forward. I have a lot of respect for governor for the governor. I like him personally. And the subject of the memo came up in providing some level of support. That is the that is the memo, the draft memo that developed and was never finalized. That was sent on August 3rd, I believe, that morning. My email later on in that evening after the agreement was signed, as I said, you know, it may shorten my tenure. That's because and it goes back to my experience. Those are my words to say, well, you know, I, I didn't I didn't sign the agreement. I declined to sign it. And and that could impact my role as the interim acting, uh, the acting executive director, that interim role. So I, I, I knew that and I accept that. Uh, that that that's not a problem. Chair, you have the floor. You do. Thank you, Chairman. So, again, getting back to the question as to oh, what did you actually mean? Were were you thinking of maybe resigning because you didn't sign the? The, the PPA as the governor wanted you to and he asked you to sign the PPA, am I correct? Yes. yes. Okay. And you felt that 
I guess, coming from your heart that the signing of that PPA was not right at that moment. And so you communicated with the two gentlemen and you stated to them that I guess because of your non-signing that your time at CUC could be shortened. I guess my question is whether you felt that something could come up. Something as in you might receive a call and you know from the Attorney General, at that time we didn't know the Attorney General was trying to book a flight out uh, early in the morning. But you were thinking that somebody might be asking for your resignation? Is, is that what this uh, statement from you? Uh, yes, Mr. Fletcher. And 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 please don't don't go over any frameworks, okay? <laughs> and we have we had enough frameworks already, so so please just elaborate. Uh, you know what what you were thinking at the time when you said that, you know, uh, my tenure might be shortened. And, and, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry to, to interrupt you before you answer that, but there are only really two things that come to mind when, when, when somebody uh, makes a statement such as this. One is either, you know, I'm probably thinking of resigning, or I don't want to resign, but something might be coming down the pipeline. Uh, asking me to resign. Yeah. Is that pretty much uh, an accurate statement, do you think, Mr. Fletcher? You know, and I'm not sure that is. You know, it, 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 and I'll go back to my experience in working with boards and commissions. You know, that, uh, you know, back when it comes to supporting policy decisions or not supporting policy decisions. Uh, you know, obviously, when, when I wrote that at the time, I felt it could affect, it may affect uh, my tenure as the acting executive director. And that, and that that's, of course, is the governor's call. And it, it's an interim role, and it's a position that reports to the governor. So uh, that's the problem. But I, I didn't have any other, any other thoughts in, uh, of that whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. I'll yield for now, Mr. Chairman. Vice. Uh, Mr. Fletcher, let's go back again to that memo. Uh, when you signed that memo, uh, did the governor ask you to, or when you uh, put together the memo the, uh, on the proposed PPA, uh, did the governor ask you to prepare this memo uh, and tell him what your position is on this PPA before he signs off on the PPA? I, I don't recall that, uh, that exact thing let, being let me said. Just, uh, let me just clarify a little bit what it is that I'm trying to ask. If I am the person in charge and uh, I'm very concerned. I want to make sure that whatever it is that I am going to sign is is what I'm supposed to sign. It's supposed to be signed, cleared by the people that are supposed to have reviewed it. Um, I would expect that it's not made verbally that you say to him, Governor, or that you tell me in your own words, 
but that I would expect that it is something in writing to make sure that there's no doubt about what was what had transpired between you and your supervisor. So is this what you were asked to do, uh, put in writing what your position is, CUC, as a person in charge of CUC, with regards to the proposed power agreement? Yes or no? Was the, did the governor ask you to put in writing your professional position on this particular contract before he signs off on the contract? I don't believe those were the words that were used in the discussion. So what were the words? I was trying to keep my answer short. Uh, yeah, please do. <laughs> Even at my wedding, I did not just say I do. I gave an explanation. Uh, you did? <laughs> as, I, as I mentioned prior, at that meeting on August 2nd, after I respectfully declined not to sign the agreement, the discussion came up after the Attorney General mentioned that it was going to move forward, he was supporting it to move forward. I felt that the Governor was relying on the Attorney General for that advice, as well as all the technical and the legal advice on, on the sufficiency of the agreement. That, that seemed apparent and obvious to me. The conversation turned around to developing a memo to support the governor. And that is how I recall it, and that is exactly what I did. Uh, it, to, I did not, as I said, I wanted to give something to show some support for the board of directors, which was the governor. So I'm using the same the same terms. And the draft memo that was never finalized or signed uh, does not make a recommendation. And I don't believe I was asked for a direct recommendation. Mr. Fletcher, is there anything in that power proposed or the memo on the proposed PPA that says, can you show me where it says that you are not in favor of the PPA or that uh, the PPA is not in the best interest of the CNMI, where? Where is this? Where is it in this memo? Those exact words are not in the memo, nor Why is there a recommendation the to move forward. You are writing a letter to the governor on the proposed PPA as his key advisor on anything that has to do with utilities in the CNMI. Why did you not put whatever you're saying on the side in that memo? I don't see anything in this memo that says that you are against the PPA and uh, then I did ask you if you, when you were standing, waiting for the PPA to be signed, did you tell the governor not to sign? No, do not sign that memo. Did you do that? And why not? Mr. Fletcher, what, what is it? I, I don't see anything here that says that you are against the PPA to give very clear direction to the person in charge of this commonwealth on what he needs to do in terms of that PPA. And let me just uh, also say, in the last paragraph you were saying that you're not going, you're not signing the agreement because it should be the board of directors. Yes, it is. It's not your signature that's needed on this big agreement. It's the board of directors, and rightfully so. You know, so in the absence of the board of directors, under the executive order, it will be the governor. Am I correct? That is what you're trying to transmit in this memo, not to tell in this memo to the governor that you are not in favor of the PPA. 
Can he answer now, Vice? Because I think you asked several questions and he, he didn't... I, I will yield for now did so that he can give his answer. Did you get the questions though, Alan? There were several. There are only two questions. I, I, I think the first one you answered already. Well, and, and, and I want to go back to a couple of different points there. You know, I, I don't feel I was a key advisor to the governor on all things utilities. Obviously this agreement was moving forward since March even before CUC and the former executive director uh, knew about it. It was brought to us as a completed agreement in early July 2000 or late June or early July 2012 and over the next 30 day period we were able to to have some influence on it and provide some analysis. Uh, so I, I, I disagree that, that the executive director or the acting executive director in, in, in my role was the key advisor on all utility issues uh, to the governor. Uh, we, we tried to have influence where we could. And, and it's, it's kind of the opposite way away uh, around to, can, to can get it part of, I, I'm getting there, ma'am. Oh, okay. And that is, is that I don't tell the governor what to do. He tells me what to do. And at that August 2nd meeting, we made, we made the advice that the agreement was not ready to sign and that it needed more analysis. The same consistent statements we have made over the last 30 days. At that same meeting, the former Attorney General said, this agreement is ready to move forward or something to this effect. We've negotiated as far as we can. This agreement was going to move forward with or without my input or my recommendation pro or con. That's when the memo came up as a, some, some level of support for the Board of Directors. I felt something was appropriate how it, and that is why it was carefully worded not to give a recommendation or draw conclusions at the same time it was only presented as a draft watermarked as such and it was never finalized the agreement moved forward just hours after that thank you uh, mr fletcher you may turn uh, that off and i think you yielded already no excuse me you did yield your can question I get, uh, no i think um uh, mr chairman i have a follow-up question to that ma'am when you finish vice you said i yield for now uh, can i be uh, given a chance to talk again no i want to ask ask a question now then i will come back to you i, I will give into that of course be only but because not to, share, not to give your own personal opinion, you know, it's not time for that yet. I think uh, everybody has given their own personal opinion, but um, uh, let me important. let me let me reference statements here first. Let me make some references. I will read from statements regarding everything that's being said so far. Mr. Fletcher has said that he did not on that day before say that no governor don't sign it but I think what he has consistently said was throughout the month of August prior to the signing we have been advising the governor about the problems and the recommendations let me read some of those so for the record uh, anybody can draw their own conclusions first going back to July 9th, CUC issued a status report memo, I believe, which was signed by Mr. Fletcher um, to the governor. It's a status report. It's, it's not necessarily just for, it's a CUC status report. And it talks about um, renewable energy procurements currently on hold, pending review by the lieutenant governor. So it's a status summary. It talks about other things, immediate operational needs and recommendations. It talks about their cash flow, the status of the executive director. But then it, there's a section there that says new power plant. It says CUC foresees difficulties 
entering into a power purchase agreement for a 50 megawatt plant without the parallel development of the proposed ship repair facility. You, what does this mean, Mr. Fletcher? That you foresee difficulties enter, entering into a PPA without a parallel or a a parallel development of the ship repair facility. First, explain that. At the first couple of meetings and before that that status report was written, that's when the uh, uh, the concept of a new power plant in as being built as part of a ship repair facility uh, being developed uh, were separated. It, it was my understanding and as I looked at the agreement it wasn't tied to a shipyard. The power purchase agreement was a standalone agreement and, and that, was, that was conferred. The only, you know, the reason for if there was a shipyard facility that needed the footprint, the physical property that the current power plant is on then obviously you've got to build a new plant if you're going to have that major economic development. Something I think everyone would, would agree with, that that would need to happen. Thank but you. Without it, it, the cost equation could be different. Thank you for that clarification. The second sentence in that uh, says, there appears to be a misassumption by the promoters of the new facility that the existing plant only has three to five years of power generating ability with normal maintenance and upgrade CUC estimates estimates the current plant could operate for over 10 years so um, there appears to be a misassumption by the promoters of the new facility who are these promoters of the new facility that are making these assumptions well, at least the two people I met with was Don Kurz, uh, I think that's the correct enunciation, and uh, Kenneth Mahmood. And that was stated that, you know, the plant was on its last legs and, and, um, and that, that is not the case under its current state of repair. Thank you. You would know that. Um, in addition, due to the cost of construction and financing for the new plant, Rates would increase 10 to 15 percent as seriously, CUC currently only generates an average of 30 megawatts. Mr. Fletcher, in your report to the governor, you also state that the driver in the cost escalation is the capital required to build a plan. If a new ship repair facility is built, and the current plan is displaced, then the cost of construction should be borne by the development. If there is no ship repair facility and CUC alone pays for the new power plant, then consumers will pay more in monthly bills as well as strand approximately $50 million over the next 12 years by building unneeded capacity. CUC recommends in-depth cost analysis and rate modeling to determine the full cost implications prior to, in, prior to entering into an agreement. So maybe you didn't tell the governor right there, but I think you have been telling the governor all along about the potential implications and advising the governor that we should do an in-depth cost analysis, you know, prior to entering into this agreement. I don't think that can be um, just, what do you call this, uh, dismissed or, or, or not seen. It is glaring, it is obvious. In another memo, rather email, dated July 20, you talk, this is an email to the lady right next to you, Ms. Fisher. 
you discuss, you say thanks, we need, we do need to do round table. We do need to round table these ideas. While we need an overall energy strategy, it seems the CNMI is pushing forward with certain initiatives without a coordinated effort. A ready, fire, aim scenario. I'm going to ask you what that means later. I will be pushing to have a joint meeting with the governor, lieutenant governor, and staff in an attempt to coordinate all the various interests. By example, in meeting with the lieutenant governor, he's, he is good moving forward with solar number one project. However, if talks progress on a new power plant, then integrating renewables, any renewables, will be costly due to the current take or pay provision and the sizable guarantee payment because I guess in parentheses capital costs you know <laughs> are you done Mr. Chairman? I, I think so I am done for now you have the floor Vice thank you I'm going to go back one more time to that power purchase agreement and you point out to me Mr. Fletcher I'm not saying that you and I don't know why you would demote yourself and consider yourself not to be a key uh, advisor to the governor in matters relating to CUC the governor is going to turn to CUC when it comes to purchase agreements such as what was he was going to sign, such as the one with the uh, uh, Saipan Development LLC. Um, you as the person in charge of CUC. Uh, where in that memo that you finally put together for the governor, did you say that the governor or advise the governor not to proceed with the signing of the contract. Where? The draft unsigned yeah, man. <clears throat> I'm trying to clear my throat. The draft unsigned memo does not say don't sign the agreement. My advice was given on August 2nd and it was not asked for. Uh, Once Mr. again, Fletcher? Yes, ma'am. A memo, that I'm, the memo that I'm talking about was is not dated August 2nd. I'm talking about the final memo that you gave to the governor that he used as a basis before he signed the contract. Where in that memo did you advise the governor you're not supposed to tell the governor what to do. You're supposed to advise him in case you do not know the difference. Where did you say that the governor is, you're advising the governor not to sign the memo? And then I also asked you previously, when you were sitting in that room waiting for the signature to happen, did you talk to the governor and reiterate it? If you were so much against it, advise him to please not sign the agreement. The two things. And please do not uh, try to waste our time trying to beat around the bush. You put together a memo that I expect and we would expect the governor to base his decision on and uh, where in that memo did you say that, or you're advising the governor, that this is the PPA that is not to be signed? We had been advising the governor for 30 days, or the governor, at least the negotiating team and the attorney general, and I only saw the governor once, uh, 
or twice, I guess, during that period. I felt on August 2nd, after I mentioned that the agreement was not ready to sign, that the decision had been made for me to stand up in a meeting of five or six different people and say, Governor, don't sign this agreement. Is I, I, I'm not going to do that. I wouldn't show that amount of disrespect. We had been consistent in all of our advice over time. And uh, I'll, I'll stand by the record so of that advice. Can I just say at this point that even if you know that something is not right, that you would, in the name of out of respect, you would advise that Mr. Governor, my advice would be to go ahead and sign it. Uh, please, I'm just uh, talking plain words over here. Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, I just want to see that we have people that are accountable and that are doing their jobs. Uh, if, you, if they need your professional uh, advice, you can be relied on. Don't give me something that is not right, just to please me, you know? We have to begin to stand up, and it is your responsibility as the head of CUC to stand up and tell the governor what needs to be told, if you feel that way. In this letter, you did not say that to the governor. That advice was not there. I'm sorry to say it. And then, let's just say that we were reading you wrong, where between that letter and the time that he finally inked up, when did you tell him, Mr. Governor, please, I, my advice is for you not to sign the memo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I think I, I end now. I don't know if you need to respond. Um, I think you've answered the question maybe four or five times, so we can move on. I would like to respond briefly. And, you may. And I, and, I, and I thank the representative for, for her comments. Uh, once again, as it is, whether the governor signs the agreement or not, that, that, that is his choice. And he is a policymaker, and I respect that role fully. And we are the implementers. We provide advice when asked. And that advice had been consistently given over the month of July and, and up to the eve of the, uh, the execution of the agreement. Thank you for clarifying that again. Um, any other members? Mr. Fletcher, before I dismiss you, I do have and have made copies of the um, public laws that relate to this um, um, CUC, CDA, uh, and, it, and it's um, I'll just provide copies to you. It has to do with the uh, $16 million owed <clears throat> to CDA by CUC. And the other legislation has to do with the um, memorandum of agreement between CUC and CDA. authorizing CUC to issue preferred stock valued at $45 million to CDA. I will have you get this and so you can review it and if it does affect this agreement, please uh, maybe you can um, send a letter to the chair and I can make copies for the members. 
Okay, with that, um, thank you, and thank you, Deb, thank you, Rebecca, for your time. Uh, you, you're dismissed. Would you like to say something before you're dismissed? I want to thank I want to thank you, Mr. Chair, and the committee uh, for all your questions, and uh, and hopefully I was able to uh, to answer them all. Thank you. Have a nice day. Search. I think I've been